Hi, I'm Darren, and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. In today's mini episode, I'll be talking about my experiences using the dynamic microphone preamp that I showcased in two prior episodes. As I mentioned, I've made two episodes showing how I made a microphone preamp to be able to use this Shure PG48 microphone. And the first episode went through the details of the circuit and how I chose some of the components and breadboarded and showed its basic function. The second episode I went into the construction as well as some of the decisions I made on choices for the actual case and how to attach the microphone to it. Now since then, I've been using this setup for all of the recorded audio for my videos, most particularly in the first one I did on the Spectrum Analyzer, and the experience has been very positive. A couple comments I would make about it though, um, that does require more time to make the video because I have to record the audio separately to my laptop and then edit it and then splice it in after I'm done editing the video. So there is more time required to do that because if I was going through the camera, the audio would pretty much already be there and I would just have to maybe fine tune it. But perhaps the most positive experience has been the quality of the audio is so much better than I had with the lapel mic and certainly better than trying to record audio through the camcorder. The, the dynamic range is much better, the, the tone of my voice is much better, and it's just a better quality for you, the listener, to hear what I'm trying to say. One unique challenge that I had right away is unlike a lapel mic where you just have to position it somewhere on your body so that you pick up the right amount of volume, when you're doing a remote mic like this dynamic mic, you have to try to get it as close as you can while you're speaking but yet not have it in frame. And in this case, I've got it just off camera here and of course it's going to make a lot of microphonics noise when I move it, but I want to show you just how close I have to have this in order to pick up good quality audio. And in some cases where I've recorded video, it's almost been comical the lengths I've had to go to to improvise some sort of structure to get from the nearest area on a workbench, let's say, where I could clamp and then extend the mic out to close to where I'm speaking. So in this particular video, uh, using a length of old banister was perfect. <laughs> Now, I'm sure many of my viewers, and perhaps even yourself, have no choice but to put your workshop in the basement, and that's where I am too. I'm down here in my, my basement where I've set up my workshop over the years, and um, there are challenges for lighting to get good lighting down here, but the audio has generally been very good, meaning I don't have hardly any interference from outside noises. However, interference from noise sources in the house are another story altogether. I pretty much only have like an hour or two in a given day where it's quiet enough in the house where I can record a video segment and have quiet enough audio. Things like just normal foot traffic will come right through. And for sure there can't be anybody running any plumbing in the house. So as long as I can keep the ambient noise in the house down to a low level, then the audio is coming through quite acceptably. And lastly, I would add, I just recently discovered how to use Audacity. I know that program has been out for many, many years, but being new to making a YouTube channel, I didn't realize how easy it was to edit sound, remove noise, and put in a more leveled out, uh, normalized volume. So hopefully you're seeing that as a positive in my videos now. So thanks for watching. That's all I have for you today. I'll be using this dynamic microphone preamp for all my videos going forward, at least until I can find something better or a way to improve the construction. Bye for now.